Hi, Karen G. Let's take a look at this new set of essays you've sent. Okay, we've got the income of these three areas. Let's see what you wrote. The three pie charts give the information of the income collected by IMF of the three countries, Benloth Land, it's supposed to be Tim's Land, but okay, and Jim's Land for the year 2014 in USD millions. Um... Let's see. Do you know what seems, this is a little strange, collected by IMF. I think IMF is just um, who collected this data. It's not like, but the way you made it sound, it's as if IMF collected the income. So you, you have to be careful about these. So let's try it a little differently. The three pie charts give the information, um, collected by IMF of the income of three countries. Um, or you could change this around even more. You could say uh, the three pie charts give the information of um, the income of Ben's land, Tim's land, and Jim's land in 2014. Uh, based on data from IMF or something like that. There were a ton of ways you could have done this. All right, overall, can it be observed that the total income of Jim's land is more than that of Ben's land and Tim's land? You keep writing Trin's land, but that's wrong. Okay, let's see. Okay, that is accurate. I think you could have maybe added one more piece of information here. You could have also said that... Uh, in the three countries, uh, the distribution of income, or rather the industries that contributed to the income uh, varied considerably, okay? Because you can see here, in each country, it's different. So this is the highest year, this is the highest year, this is the highest year. So you could have said something about that. You didn't need to, but you could have. Okay, ah, here's where you said it, but it's part of your detailed paragraph. Let's see what you said. In all the three countries, major sources of income are from different sectors. But, okay, that's not a sentence. You've got to be careful. You have to say, in Ben's land, 45,000, and then you have to say USD millions, you have to add that, uh, was from agriculture. And then the same thing here. In Tim's land, $75,000 million was from heavy industry, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, the same thing. Although the biggest sources of their income are different, natural resources is the least contributor for the income of all the three countries. You don't need to say the countries again. We already know what they are. Uh, I see why. Okay, fine. With 3,000, don't forget to add the million, okay? 3,000 million, 400,000 million, uh, I'm sorry, 4,000 million and 7,000 million, respectively. All right, I understand why you did that. So let's see. What you've done so far is you've talked about the highest in each country and you talked about the lowest. So, okay, fine. And then you have four, no, you have three more to talk about. Let's see what you did. Looking at the light industry, Tim's land income is this, which is four times out of Ben's land and about a, no, get rid of this A, which less than half of that, no, less than half that of Jim's land. Fine. The earnings from service sector, the service sector, of Tim's land are 40,000, comma, twice as many, uh, twice as many as Ben's land's services. Uh, that's a little strange. Twice as many as that of Ben's land. Just sounds a lot better. In the case of heavy industry, both Jim's land and Tim's land both Jim's land and Ben's land earn, no S, the same at 15000 a year. Uh, agricultural income of Jim's land is almost half that of Tim's land. Get rid of this than. With, okay, that's fine. Um, I thought what you did here was interesting. I thought the way you organized was interesting. I actually liked it. I thought that was a good way to do it. Um, I don't know if that's how I would have done it, but I like what you did. So basically you focused the first paragraph on the highest and the lowest of each country. Um, let me see about your accuracy. 
natural resources. Yeah, no, that was a good way to do this. And then you had four more to talk about. And so you talked about them, not four, sorry, you had three more to talk about. So you talked about them here, light industry, and then services, and then agricultural income. So that was a very smart way of doing this. So good for you. There was some awkwardness though in, in some of the language you used. So that for me was uh, probably the weakest point. Other than that, I, I, like I said, in terms of coherence and cohesion, I like what you did here. I like the way you organized your answer. That was well done. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good answer. You just have to be a little careful with some of your grammar. Uh, like I said, that was the weakest area for me. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at this task two now. All right, so let's take a look at your task two now. Do you think it's better for students to work before the university study? Here is what you said. The issue of work before entering university leads many deba debates among experts and educators. Uh, can you say that, that something leads debates? I'm not really sure. I have a big question mark in my head. Let me think about it, though. Um, some of them believe that it is worth working before entering university. However, others stand opposite of this. No, definitely you can't say that, to stand opposite of something. That means something totally different. There are a number of reasons in favor of both sides without this the here. However, I am with the former rather than the latter point of view. This says we'll discuss the reasons for making this choice through examples. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know if I like this through examples. Um, you could have just said supported by examples from X and Y. Okay. That would have sounded better rather than through examples. To begin with, if, if, no, you can't use will after if. So to begin with, if the students start working before the university, it will provide them a sense of responsibility, independence, and experience. This is because they will understand the value of earning and a sense of responsibility about managing their expenses. Moreover, hold on. Okay. Uh, moreover, they can make independent choices to opt. No, they can make independent choices uh regarding the field they i don't like this word adore either the field they choose for instance doing a job a job for further education will allow them to take the best decision and will help them know the areas no comma they are interested in due to the liked choices the productivity in the sector they choose no comma here is most likely to increase Okay, um, this paragraph um, needed a few things for me, okay? Um, for example, you said that it will, su uh, supply, it will provide them a sense of responsibility, independence, and experience. My question is, why? All right, you say they will understand the value of earning and a sense of responsibility about managing their expenses. Yeah, okay, but... Still, why? I mean, why do they have to do this before university? Why can't they do this maybe along with university? Or why can't they do this after university? So you're trying to make the point um, as to why people should study before university. Because then the other argument is, well, doesn't university study also help people develop a sense of responsibility, independence, and experience? So I felt like your argument here was really rather weak. All right, it wasn't particularly convincing. Now, I know that sometimes people say that IELTS is an, um, is an exam, it's a language exam, and it's not an idea exam, but that's not entirely true. You do have to convince the examiner um, about your argument. Otherwise, it sounds like maybe you're just saying what you're saying because of some sort of limitation with your language skills, and you don't want the examiner to think that, okay? So, um... Now here, I felt like this absolutely needed some development. You say they can make independent choices and doing the job will help them take the best decision. So I think you absolutely needed some more development here. I think you needed some solid examples and to explain to us what it is you're talking about. So here you need to give us an example like, I don't know, say for example, maybe somebody's doing a job in graphic design before they go to university. Well, then they can pursue this uh, field in university. Okay, so I think you absolutely needed to give us a tangible example here to make this clear to us because I really wasn't sure about what you were talking about. Okay? Okay. Um, 
All right, let's move on to the next paragraph. Additionally, it is a good opportunity to support further education. The opportunity of doing work can give, careful, can give them enough time to manage their expenses, especially, this doesn't make sense, whose, especially students whose parents cannot support their education. For example, I have experienced this situation when my parents weren't able to afford my further education. I had no choice but to work and support my studies. Due to the work only, I don't understand this. What does it mean, the work only? I was able to complete them. Complete what? Your studies. Make sure that that's clear. And also, I came across my passion. Um, I don't, okay, here's the thing. I'm glad that you used a personal example, but I feel like a lot of this is a repeat of what you said before. And um, I think that now you're kind of losing it in terms of the coherence and cohesion because you're putting things in the wrong place. Let me tell you what I mean. You said this thing earlier about they will know the area they're interested in and then uh, that's what you said up here, right? Well, that seems to make sense to this idea about coming across your passion. So that you needed to rearrange these two paragraphs. Um, I felt like some of the stuff you were saying like here, they learn to manage their expenses. You talked about that already. They give, you said sense of responsibility, value of earnings, sense of managing their expenses. So it's really a repeat. It's, so it feels like, again, you're just saying the same things, except here you're adding this example, this personal example. So you definitely needed to reorganize these two paragraphs, okay? And you have to support the idea. You have to give this support here and put it, after what you're actually describing. So you need to reorganize these. So to sum up, it is beneficial to let adolescents work before stepping into the universities, get rid of that, as it will provide them extra time to choose the best options, support their studies, and nurture their future. Our ultimate goal should be to help these students to choose the best as per their interests so that they will not give up in the future. All right, that's fine. So I think um, I've been pretty clear about what I thought the strengths and the weaknesses were. Like I said, you had some nice ideas, you had some good elements, but you kind of, you did lose it here, all right? You have to reorganize these um, in a more appropriate way. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about that, but go ahead and correct these, and let's see more work from you, okay? Good luck.